Hello again and welcome everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and we're going to probably round out this little mini-series. It's uh, starting to become a full-blown series, as many videos as we put in there. Uh, but it is entitled, It Takes a Village. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is your first time here, or first time watching this. Fear not, you do not have to watch this in any particular order to get anything of value out of it. Uh, actually, at the end, somewhere over here, I'll put the cards up that you can click on it and go watch the series in its entirety. So, the purpose of doing this mini-series is that in a long-term SHTF situation, there's going to be different jobs and responsibilities that need to be done and delegated, and people need to have those roles and the purpose of this is to go over those roles and the responsibility of each of those roles. And this one, we're going to go after leadership, okay? So, when it comes to leadership, this is going to probably be uh, arguably one of the most important jobs. Uh, without leadership, uh, you know, a lot of things are doomed for failure. Uh, now, we're going to see how many people probably start to disagree with me in certain uh, aspects of this one in the comment section, but hey, that's fine. But out of every other video, let's go ahead and start with a definition. So to define the uh, term of leadership, I'm going to say it is someone or even a small group of people that oversees other people uh, in some sort of position of you know higher authority. Uh, you know, it's a it's an agreed upon authority, if you will. So. First, you're going to have to decide how in the world your group is even going to govern itself. So uh, there, there's kind of uh, different ways you can do this. First is you can have a single person be the leader. Uh, you can come up with however you want to do it, whether it is uh, voting or uh, you know however it is that you're going to do. Maybe the person with the most experience or uh, somebody that already is a very strong leader or whatnot. But you can have it to where it is uh, a single person. Now, this can actually work pretty well in small groups. In larger groups, it may uh, not work as well. It actually sometimes causes problems. Uh, a single leader, they're going to make a decision, and more times than you know, not, that decision is not going to be what the people want. And that starts to lead to frustration, anger, and even start to uh, manifest some other nasty, ugly things. So uh, there's upsides and downsides to having a single person in charge. Uh, so you can usually make decisions a lot quicker. Uh, usually a good leader, depending, again, how big your group is, uh, we'll, we'll usually seek advice, you know, they'll, they'll have uh, some sort of advisory people that they trust that'll help them uh, make decisions. Maybe uh, there's a problem and they don't quite understand the, the aspects of it, if you will. And so they'll go to somebody that is maybe more knowledge of that so they can get some real quick lessons so they can better uh, become informed to make a, a, a good decision. Another way that you can uh, have a leader in your group is to basically have representatives some sort of you know committee council whatever you want to call it uh, now this is a good idea maybe for uh, some of the medium to large groups and this is because it'll start making people feel like they have more of a say in what's going on uh, and that that's kind of one of the upsides. Now, one of the downsides is that this is sometimes uh, time consuming. And in certain instances, it, there's a situation that requires immediate attention to be able to gather the people from each, uh, you know, group of people or whatever that they're representing. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to get the word out, to get everybody into a meeting spot and, and you know, get the information so everybody's on the same page and things like that. So uh, there, there's definitely upsides and downsides to whichever way that you're going to, uh, you know, go about it. Uh, now, if you're going to have representatives, one of the things that you could do is go through and make it to where each group that we have talked about in each one of these is uh, a group that has a representative. So you're going to have somebody that is uh, head of security. Okay, there's a representative. You're going to have somebody that's a head of um, 
uh, communications and, and logistics, okay? Whoever that is, or your representative, you know, things like that. So there's actually another method that you could govern a group. And that is basically where every single decision that is a major decision that, you know, a leader would, would make uh, is brought up and voted on by every single member of your group until you either get 51% or some agreed upon overwhelming majority, two thirds or whatever, uh, and you decide things that way. Now, this way, kind of the upside, is that everyone actually has a voice in the decision process, right? If everybody gets into kind of like a town hall setting and every single person has to say yes or no, then, you know, it, it, it's a vote and you are a part of that. Now, the bad side of this is now it's even more time consuming. Instead of just getting a few people together and all that, now you have to get basically every single person in the same room uh, at the same time and go through and get everybody on the same page. And which uh, sometimes, especially if you have a very large piece of property with a ton of people, uh, you're not going to get everybody. Uh, you still have to have security going on. Uh, you still have to have, uh, you know, somebody that's caretaking for people that, that can't, you know, they're, they're sick, they're injured, they can't make it. Uh, you know, they're out, obviously, and then whoever's caring after them, uh, there, there's a lot to where people are not there. And then that causes problems. Hey, I didn't get a vote. Uh, it only won by three votes. There was six of us out. It could have went the other way. You know, there's a lot that can go up or down any one of these that, you know, we, we discussed upon on something like this. Now, <laughs> you're going to have to make sure that when it comes to doing any one of these combinations, now, whether you do uh, one of those three that we talked about, you do a combination of two of them, three of them, you come up with something completely different that we didn't talk about it. Uh, the, the, one thing that history has taught us that's an absolute fact is there's absolutely no perfect way to govern anybody. Uh, it, it just, it, everything fails. It, it is what it is. You get greed, you get corruption. Uh, you've got human factor. Okay. Uh, you got emotions, all, all sorts of things happen. And, uh, you know, you try your best, you do what you can, but at, at the end of the day, not everybody's going to agree. That's kind of the whole point. Uh, you know, you wouldn't have to have a leader if everybody thought exactly the same, right? There's no decision making. So when it comes to this, uh, your leader or leaders, okay, they're going to probably be somebody that already has leadership experience, uh, whether that is uh, maybe years uh, being some sort of uh, manager, store manager, uh, project manager. They're, they're going to have some sort of experience where they already uh, manage people, projects, things like that uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. So they have an understanding and they, they kind of know what goes on. Now, in an SHTF situation, that may be a little bit different depending on what you know, your leader is. So uh, just by uh, having somebody raise their hand and say, I want to be the leader because I've been managing a, I don't know, fast food for the last four years. That makes me, you know, automatically the leader. It's not necessarily true, correct? So you have to, you have to go more into it. I know it's obvious, but uh, you, you'll probably get some of those people that they're going to try and justify any means necessary. Now, uh, one of my things in the back of my mind is that usually the person that does not want it is probably one of the best leaders that you can possibly pick. Uh, they're not interested in power. They're not interested in, you know, authority or anything like that. Um, you know, they, they just want to roll their sleeves up, get the hands dirty and get, get the job done. Uh, those tend to somewhat make the best leaders. Uh, but when it comes to leadership, if you think that you are, or if you are going to be one of the people that decide who is the leader, then there's going to be qualities that you're going to have to look for. So they're going to have to not be shy, right? They're going to have to deal with people on an everyday basis, both in good times and bad times. Uh, the person that's going to lead or people or whatnot, 
that's going to be in that leadership role, they're going to have to make difficult decisions. They're going to have to uh, really be able to be, um, you know, uh, the ability to adapt to different things. Uh, they're probably going to hear things and see things that other people won't, and they're going to have to be able to handle that. They're going to have to be extremely trustworthy individuals, and they're going to have to make sure that not only are they doing everything they can, you know, uh, leadership-wise and whatnot and the greater good for the community and things like that, but they're going to have to get uh, everybody involved, okay? And one of my favorite things, and let me move over because I'm going to put it up right here, is this African proverb that says, the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth, okay? Now think about that just for a minute. When you go through and you go, this guy is really strong, we're going to have him do this, and this person here, and this person there, and this, and this, and this, the one that you outcast may be the one that is the, the uh, factor that destroys everything. They don't mean to. They're, they're not out for vengeance. They're not, they're not an evil person. They're not trying to do anything you know, along those lines. But you've cast them out. Even though maybe in a, a 10 steps back looking at the picture, you go, well, they're, they're part of the community. I don't know what the problem is. But are they? You have to make sure that each person is uh, as happy as they can be. We all have to do things that we don't always want to, you know, necessarily we want to do, right? But the job still has to get done. Uh, you know, there's there's probably most of us don't like to go out and, and weed the garden, uh, don't want to dig the latrine, uh, you know, don't want to sit next to uh, somebody that's getting sick all night and, and things like that. Uh, but you do what you have to, right? You, you just, you've got to get the job done. And so taking and giving one person all the really low end, you know, junk jobs that nobody wants to do, um, you can get it to where their morale is down so much that they suddenly feel like an outcast with inside the walls of the community. And just like the pro proverb said, they'll burn that village to the ground just so they can they can get warm they, they've been cast out and a leader will not let that happen a leader will make sure that every single person feels just as valued as everybody else and that is one of the greatest things that any leadership can do because it doesn't matter what is going on on the 50th floor of the executive level of the the person that's in a, a fifty thousand dollar suit the janitor is extremely important because if that building is trashed up and, and it's dirty and filthy, they're not going to make very good money. You know, same thing with, with your, uh, your maintenance guy, you know, if the light switches don't work and the plumbing's leaking and, and things like that, you know, same thing with your receptionist. If, if some client walks in and they're rude and, and, you know, on their cell phone, they don't give them any time you may lose a bunch of money just because of the person sitting out front. And so you have to make sure, no matter if it's child, if it's elderly, I don't care who it is, if they are part of your group, they need to be a part of your group, if you get what I'm saying. So uh, let's round this out. So this way it's not too long of a video. So when it comes down through all this, okay, um, we'll do some final thoughts. And I know some of you are going to be disappointed that I can go into more detail in this one. And, and I tell you what, if there's going to be some interest in things like that, if I get a bunch of comments and whatnot, I can do another video in the future. Uh, for now, I just kind of wanted to step back and do this as kind of like a broad overview, kind of get the ball rolling in order, you know, for people to start considering some of the options and maybe even get thinking about it for the first time. So whatever you decide needs to be, you know, fully agreed upon, uh, you know, whether it's a single person, a group or a council, however you're going to do it. Uh, if, but if you decide to do a council to run things and a handful of people are not going to be happy, then you, you know, kind of have to get the thing to where, you know, a, a good idea to figure it out now that if and when the time comes to set up your leadership, Make sure you consider this decision extremely carefully right now, okay? Keeping in mind, 
and what's best for your group while being as fair as possible. You also have to be extremely realistic that your group is not immune to the problems that we have today, the greed, the corruption, the bribes, the scandals, all the other things that basically taint uh, our government and, and leadership and power all around the world and all throughout history. So whatever the way your group decides, you need to make sure that at least one person with some level of authority has the skills that we kind of went over and, and actually has talent for all of the things that we talked about, that they have the, the talent for direct verbal conflict and, and to get into them sticky situations to where it's uncomfortable and all that, and to be able to get in there and diffuse those you know, difficult situations and things like that. Uh, there, there's a lot that goes into being a leadership, uh, especially now, if you, if you're going to be that person that, that you feel, Hey, I'm going to be the leader of the group, then you have to be able to, you, you have to know <laughs> that if the time ever comes, if, if the balloon goes up and, and it hits the fan, every single life within the the confines of your community rests upon your shoulders the decisions that you make every single day is life and death and maybe minute right now in that very moment it was a really simple thing somebody came up and asked a question and without hesitation whatever yeah just do that yeah a week from now it may not be so simple it wasn't uh, an easy question and because, uh, you know, you blew it off and you didn't think that it was that serious at the time, there's no going back. There's no reset button. You have to take it as serious as you possibly can. It is one of the hardest things to truly be a leader. And I don't think there's enough people that appreciate that. We all kind of make fun of a little bit into the thing of uh, people that, that kind of jump in new to the preparedness community, that they're just LARPing, you know, they just want to grab all the SWAT gear and they're going to run around and play Call of Duty whenever things go off. And, and that's that's what it is. And there are a few people out there that's like that. The only thing is, is I think there's a lot of people that in, in their head that they believe that they're going to be the leader of some sort of group. And I don't think that they fully understand everything that that, that job entails, all the responsibilities that comes along with that, and how serious, life and death serious, it is to take on that role and to have all of them responsibilities. So... We'll see what you guys think. Uh, let me know down in the comment section. Do we need to expand on this video? Do we need to expand on any of the videos? Do we need to go more in depth? Did I forget a role or a responsibility of, of anything? I know there's there's other jobs and other things, but again, I was trying to keep it as a mini series, right? So uh, let me know. Uh, I will, by uh, all means, look at all the comments. Uh, if if we get it, then I will expand on some videos. If we need to add some videos, I will be more than happy. If we need to move on to a different topic, uh, we've already done tools. Now we've done jobs. Uh, there's a lot that goes into a long-term SHTF situation, and, and we can talk about anything that you want to talk about, but that's it for this video. So if you made it to this far in the video, guess what? You rock. I appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with me. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you have a blessed day. Stay tuned because there's definitely more information to come. And I want to remind you, remain united because we're all prepping in this together.